we'll be continuing our study in Romans once again. Romans chapter 1, verses 11 and 12 today, Lord willing. If you recall last week, we looked at Paul's prayer. How he prayed for the Romans as well as others, and how he was praying that he could come see the Romans and he would have a, a prosperous journey. And he kind of gives reason for his prayer in these two verses. Verse 11, he starts with, For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Amen. We begin by reiterating that he longs to see them. It had been Paul's desire for some time now to meet the saints in Rome. If you recall from when he studied his life and ministry, he had never made it to Rome. But we can turn two places real quick in chapter 15 here of Romans. Then back in Acts chapter 19, we'll kind of get the timeline of when these, when this is taking place. Romans 15, verse 25 and 26 say, But now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints, for it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. Amen. So here Paul has telling the Romans he was about to go unto Jerusalem. His plan, as we'll see in Acts chapter 19, was to depart from Jerusalem and go to Rome. Acts 19, verse 21, he had been in Ephesus, and God worked mightily there. I think it said he had been in Asia Minor for about two years at this point. So we'll pick up verse 21 of Acts 19. And he says, after these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to, to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. Amen. That's what we left out and went to Macedonia, made this collection that he was speaking of to take to the saints at Jerusalem. Paul's desire was that he could go to their Jerusalem and see the saints and then go on to Rome and meet the brethren there. Amen. But if you recall, that was not the Lord's will exactly. They would be arrested when he got to Jerusalem. He would eventually make it to Rome through his appeals. Mm -hmm. He would go there in bond rather than as a free man. Mm -hmm. But we see even under that house arrest, that he continued his ministry. You bet. We did make it to Rome, but just not the way he thought he was going to. Most people think Romans was written around 55 to 57 AD and that he was in Corinth and the house of Gaius. He does say in chapter 16 that he, he was with Gaius when he wrote this, but there's a few different ones mentioned, so I don't know which one he was with, but we do know he was traveling back towards Jerusalem and with the intent to go to Rome, yet the Lord Man. saw fit to do it a different way. But do we do we really ever long to see the saints as like Paul did? So this yeah. long to see the saints is the same right. way the Bible uses to describe the babe that desires the milk. Mm -hmm. Do we ever have that type of desire for the saints of God to fellowship with them, to be encouragement to them, or in turn be encouraged by them? I'd say most of the time we make things a routine rather than yeah, that's it. a real desire. Amen. But he says that, that he longed to see them, and he goes on to say that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. Now, Paul is not saying here he was going to go around like Oprah and start handing out gifts. 
Well, he wasn't going to come lay hands on Brother Larry and give him the gift of tongues or <laughs> Brother Junior the gift of healing or any of that type of thing. Those are gifts which we'll look at later. I think it's in chapter 12 he addresses gifts. Mm -hmm. But when he says that he wants to impart the some spiritual gift, he was I believe what he was saying is he wanted to share or give to them some of the gifts that he was imparting. Mm -hmm. well, he had gifts such as special revelation and special knowledge that others didn't have. And he, we see all throughout his epistles that he shared that with the saints. Amen. Paul also had, I don't know what the technical term would be, but a gift of being able to set people straight. Mm -hmm. We see that with the Corinthians Amen. here with Peter. And he would most certainly do that with the Romans as well. Mm -hmm. These are the type of gifts that he was in, imparting to them. As we see, the reason is to the end that he may be established. You know, not that the church would be founded or started, but that they would be made firm, that they would be strengthened. That that was his purpose in coming to them, first and foremost, that their foundation would be sure in the faith. Amen. Uh, this is opposed to those in Ephesians 4, 14, where it says they were tossed about to and fro with every wind of doctrine. You see many today like that, but if Paul's desire for the Romans was that they would be established in the faith, that they would be firm in the faith. They wouldn't be soon shaken. Amen. And that should be our desire for our church here and really for all of the saints. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That they would be strong in the truth, that they would be firm in the faith and in their faith. <laughs> it should never please us to see one of God's churches or one of God's children falling away. Amen going after heresies or the ways of this world, but rather we should desire that they would be established, as he says here. Amen. Going on verse 12, he adds on to this, and he says, That is, that I may be comforted together with you. Here we see the importance of really fellowship with saints. Mm -hmm. See, so he, he says that he would be comforted together with them, that in coming to them and helping them and giving them these spiritual gifts, he said they would both be encouraged. That certainly it was for the benefit of the Romans, but Paul said he would also be blessed by it. Mm -hmm. well, if serving others or ministering or whatever it is you're given to do, that always and only feels like a burden, then perhaps your heart isn't right. Right. It's truly serving God's people should be a blessing both ways. When we encourage the saints, we should be encouraged in return. When we share the truth, that should cause us spiritual joy. But it seems that we are oftentimes always so focused on ourselves that we forget about blessing others. Right. Or we see it more as a, a duty rather than a privilege. Mm -hmm. He says that they may be comforted together with, with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. And this should be a comfort to the child of God that we have the same faith as our yeah. brothers you know, in Clarksville, as those in Olmstead, as well as those on the other side of the world, mm -hmm. China and the Philippines and such countries that all the faith, or all the saved have the same faith. Mm -hmm. you know, we know some have varying levels of personal faith, but the same saving faith is in all of God's people. As Paul calls it, the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, some certainly have 
better understanding of what we call the faith, the, the doctrines and teachings of the Word of God, such as church truth and salvation, and as well as other doctrines that we deem essential. But that faith, as far as biblical faith, is the same across all of God's people. And that is something that could cause us to, I guess joy would be the right word to encourage us that we can fellowship with the saints. Amen. Whether they're here or whether they're across the country, when this brother from Mexico comes, he will have the same faith as you and I. Amen. We can enjoy fellowship with God's people wherever we are, whether we're the same nationality and skin color, whether we're polar opposites. That's one thing that brings together the Christian faith unlike many of the other world religions. Now I know false churches and other denominations, they will oppose, but yet those who are truly born again, there is a kindred spirit between Amen. their souls and ours. Amen. And that was what Paul was looking forward to when he was going to Rome, that he could enjoy this fellowship that he knew would be there between the two. Yet oftentimes we as God's people let insignificant things get between us. We let a little bit of things cause division between us, but yet right. Scripture is clear that we ought to be in unity one with another, especially within our own church. You're right. Amen. But we can rejoice in the fact that the same faith that saved me, that saved Brother Junior, Brother Larry, and all the others here, and it's not faith that originated within me or would originate within you, but rather it's that faith originates with Christ himself. Amen. You're right. Let us not take fellowship as a light thing. We we enjoy it very easily here in this area. We have many churches within a short driving distance. We go just a little bit farther, there's even more churches. But I know some churches that don't have any within an eight hour drive. Right. Yet even in that situation, we still ought to fellowship one with another in our own assembly. Amen. Well, I think sometimes we're, we get the attitude that Elijah got. I'm the only one left. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, what did God tell Elijah? I have 7,000 men that have not bowed the knee to Baal. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I respect Brother A.W. Pink. Read a lot of his writings, but when he got to the end of his life, he felt much like Elijah. And he was the only one serving God. That's why fellowship with God's people is important. You're right. So we are not equipped to serve God alone and solitarily, but the fellowship with God's people is always an encouragement to the true believer. That's right. Paul, he longed for this fellowship with the Romans, and we should long for that same type of fellowship with brothers and sisters here or anywhere else. We'll go ahead and close with that thought, but we're going to continue on verse 13 next week. All right.